Welcome back to how to build an F-14 Tomcat. So, uh, last video, got that center section molded. Told you guys I was gonna get ready and I was gonna get those, uh, the insides of the inlet ramps molded. Well, they are molded and trimmed. So, right now we have a complete F-14 fuselage mold. So, uh, getting closer, getting a lot closer. So those little inlet ramps, you wouldn't think they'd take that long because they're so small, but believe it or not, those things took about four and a half, five hours to do total. And it's just a really small, tight area to get in there, and then all the corners, it just, it took a little bit, it actually took longer to do both of those than it did probably to do this whole side here with uh, two of us working on that. But um, fuselage, done. So, uh, Fuselage done, wing panels are done, two stab panels are done, two vertical stabs are done. Oh, let's see what else do I have. Oh, I got a canopy frame that's done. I got two overwing fairings, a rudder, a ventral fin, an exhaust nozzle. Yeah, so I got a whole bunch of stuff done. And you're probably thinking, finally, he's done with molds. Unfortunately not. I've still got nine more to go. So uh, out of those nine molds, five will be quick and easy because they're just gear doors and speed brake stuff. And for those, I'm just going to lay down. Actually, I'm not even going to put any epoxy down. I got this cool little stuff here in my cabinet. From AdTech, it's this 323TC. And this uh, TC, I believe, stands for tooling dough or tooling something or another. It's, uh, <laughs> this stuff's like Play-Doh. You mix it one-to-one. -one. So I got two gallons total of this stuff. There's one, one here, then I got another one right there. So you just mix it one to one each other you ball it up like play-doh to get it mixed and uh, Then the cool part is you just Lay it down on whatever you want to mold We would cure for a couple hours and then you peel it off and it's nice and hard and uh, Bam there's your mold. So with that stuff. I'm going to use it to do all the gear doors and then the upper and lower speed brake portions so those won't take long at all. Once I get these, get this uh, this plug pulled out of here, I can knock that out in probably an hour or two. So that's gonna be the next thing I do after I pull this plug out. But I'm gonna leave this thing in the, I'm gonna leave the plug in the molds for about a week, maybe a little bit longer, just to give it more time to, to cure. And um, if I can talk work into doing it, I'm gonna put this thing in our autoclave and I'm gonna bake it for probably about 16 hours, about 160 degrees or so, that way it'll, be nice and nice and strong and I won't ever have to worry about uh, the thing chipping on me or anything so fuselage is done wings all that good stuff getting closer got to go down to Florida for two weeks end of the month so uh, that actually <laughs> might be a good time to just just leave it in the molds until I get back anyway was uh doing some tests and whatnot on some foam and some balsa wood. What I did is I've got the white Rohacel 71 that I used in my first stab half. I got a piece of the pink stuff that Bob uses, which is also an Arex foam. And then I got a piece of contest grade eighth inch white, eighth inch balsa. And what I did is I just, they're cut all exactly the same size. I just stacked all three and I just cut them out as square as I could get it. And uh, then I took two ounce glass cloth and I just cut four pieces and I laminated both of it. And when I laminated, I made sure the entire thing was had a really nice uh, resin rich surface. So it was like a real nice puddle of resin across the top and bottom of it. Then peel ply and then, uh, and then the bleeder cloth, stuck it in the vacuum bag, 21 inches of vacuum and I left it there for Oh, about 12 hours, and I let it cure. So the balsa, you can see it kind of has a curve just from where my vacuum fitting got sucked into it and crunched it. But um, I did the, ba the balsa in the center, and then the foam was on both sides, and it was equally spaced. That way, nothing funky happened. So the balsa wood piece started out before I glassed it. Just the balsa was three grams. Afterwards, the glassing and the resin and all, it turned out to six grams. So this one is twice as heavy after 
after it than uh, when I started. Bob's little piece, you'll see it's got a fun, uh, funny color. This is actually where, this part's where the the uh, the peel pop ripped the cloth off the foam. But it's fine because it's still saturated. And this part's actually, I don't know why, it's a little, I guess it's a little resin lean right here in this part. But here's the funny thing. Before it started off at 2 grams, after the glass and the resin and vacuum bagging, it's out at 7 grams right now. So it's 3.5 times heavier than what it started off as. And here's my white foam. It started off at 3 grams for bare foam, and afterwards it ended up at 9 grams. Foam, resin, and uh, two pieces of glass cloth, so it's only three times heavier. So out of all of this, the balsa wood actually ended up being the lightest, but it's also the weakest, just by kind of moving it around. My white stuff is actually lighter than Bob's pink stuff for whatever reason. And it's actually pretty, it's hard to tell because the, the, uh, that part there as far as strength goes, but I'd say they're, the white stuff's a little bit stronger. But, um, not exactly the results I was thinking of. You're probably wondering why I'm even talking about this. As y'all know in the previous videos, these stab halves came out at a pound and a half for an assembled one, and just the skins are at a pound. So I had all this stuff laying around. I was like, well, before I go and start spending money on this pink stuff, let's see exactly what, in a small scale test, the results are. And I, I knew the boss was going to come out fairly lighter than the rest of it, but uh, I was not expecting this pink stuff to come out heavier than my white foam. And it was just really, really odd, especially considering this really big area here that obviously got more vacuum to it so it sucked all the resin out so completely unexpected so my next step is what i'm going to do is i am going to take i'm going to do the exact same test but i'm going to put a piece of carbon cloth on all of these and i'm going to see exactly what kind of difference i get you're probably wondering why i'm going to do that same reason i just want to do a small test i want to see exactly how much uh, weight that carbon cloth added to it and I have a feeling it's gonna be pretty significant I bet you this number is gonna probably double on all of these so we're gonna go from 6 to 12 7 to 14 and 9 to 18 so if that's the case if it doubles all of our weights in that carbon cloth and if you do a full carbon cloth skin on something that's got two square feet of surface area that's gonna be pretty significant and let me grab a ruler Oh, I mean, these things are pretty small. I think they're like five by four. Yeah, here we're showing just over right at five and a quarter by three and a quarter. So 16 square inches roughly without doing any crazy point out the calculator. So if it doubles on 16 square inches, imagine what it's going to do on 24 square inches. So that's why the reason for all of this and for the next pieces that are going to get carbon on them this is all just scrap material so uh it really is not costing me much i got a bunch of scrap little cutoff stuff that is specifically why i bought uh some cutoffs scrap cutoffs it's just four little pieces like this to do tests on so that said if the reason behind all the weight is that full sheet of carbon cloth on the skin that piece of carbon is going to get eliminated and I'm going to do some other, uh, probably a couple, another layer or two of the glass cloth with just some uh, carbon tape around the structure areas to hold it in place. So, test piece is done, fuselage done, all the other stuff is just about done. First thing I gotta do when I pull that mold off especially that top part of the mold of the forward fuselage is I gotta make the top skin of the fuselage so I can get my carry through spar structure um, built up for the plug so I can make that mold that thing's gonna be that's gonna be the heaviest part of the entire airplane I bet you it ends up being probably two pounds by itself because it's gonna be strong it's gonna be I'm planning on about quarter inch thick total solid carbon fiber so it's gonna be a lot of carbon fiber in that one piece but 
it's designed, and I, I, I tested this in CAD, if everything works like it's supposed to, it's designed to where it'll hold 800 pounds of force per wing half. So it'll take 1,600 pounds total before the, the end caps where the, the pivot brackets will bolt to. I'm not going to let that thing fail. And we're not going to have any dihedral on the wings when they take off and all this stuff. It's going to be done. It's going to be done right. If even if it even if it comes up three pounds, if I can save a little bit of weight, great. I'll I'll use some of this pink or the white foam or balsa or something. But that carry through spar is going to be strong. That's another thing. Overkill here, over or overkill there. I don't mind. I can pull weight out of somewhere else with a. Just changing layups, and even that that spar. Once the initial test flights are done, if it's way too strong, I can pull some carbon out of it. But the first one's going to be overbuilt for a reason, just because I don't want the first airplane to fail. But uh, Easter Sunday, y'all have a great time with your family, or out flying, or doing whatever y'all are doing today. And until next time, we will see you in the shop.